In this lesson, we are going to study some preliminaries of graph theory, which are in fact the basics of network science. As we have already seen, the, we are speaking in some cases about graph theory if we are thinking more about algorithms and in network science if we are thinking more about the properties, the analysis of data and the general properties that can be inferred for, for the whole structure from the local properties that we have in the nodes. So in this video we are going to see the formalization and matrix representation of the graphs, directed and non-directed graphs, which is the underlying representation obtained from graph theory. First of all, we are going to start about some introduction about the beginning of, net of graph theory. So the beginning of graph theory is in the 18th century when there was uh, the problem of the Konigsberg bridges, which was solved by Euler. So the thing is that there was a city, Konigsberg, that was traversed by the Pregal River and it has seven bridges which were connecting the north, south, east part and also with an island in the middle. So it was the, the, some, some clue that the, what has to be solved if it was possible to cross all the bridges only once and return to the same point in the city. So the thing is that this problem has no solution in, and the solution for this uh, problem was provided by Leona Euler, who was giving birth to graph theory. So for solving this problem, uh, the solution can be obtained through graph theory. And the nice part is that it's not about the metrical properties, about the concrete uh, places, but the relation that they are between, there are between the zones. So as we have seen in the picture in the middle, what we have is a representation of the river and the bridges, and we have put the nodes in the middle part of the island, the north part, the south and the east part, and we are connecting them with edges uh, through each one of the, of the bridges. So all I what saw is that there is no solution of this problem because there are some nodes which are connected with other nodes by an odd number of edges. And for having the solution, this problem has only one solution if all the nodes are connected with an even number of nodes or, through an, or with an even number of edges. So we are not going to use these nodes in which we have with several edges connecting two nodes, but okay, the thing is that for solving this problem, the solution was not studying, as we have said, the metrical properties, but relations. And these relations are given by graphs. The standard notation that we are going to use is that the graph will be given by a pair of sets, B and E, where B is a set of non-empty elements that we will call nodes or vertices, and E is the set of non-empty pairs of elements that of B. So if the pairs of elements, in these pairs of elements, the order is important, we will say that the graph is directed, and we will call the elements arcs. If in the pairs of elements of E, are, the order doesn't matter, then we will say that the graph is non-directed, and we will call the elements edges. Or in general, in many cases, you can find that edges is the word used for, for both cases. So the thing is that in the example of the Karat Thakari's Karat Club, so what we have is, in this case, following this formulation, what we have is 34 nodes, which are representing the master, uh, master high, the uh, administration and the part members of the club, and representers through the numbers 1 to 34, and later we have a set of edges 2, 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, and so on, which are representing the connections that we have represented here in the graph. So this is one way of representing the nodes and the connections of the edges, but uh, what we have seen here is that the graph is undirected, and there's an alternative way of representing this, which is to use a matrix. And in this matrix, which is of size 34 times 34, now same number of nodes uh, uh, that, do, uh, that we have in, in the matrix, so what we are connecting representing the matrix with the, the graph in the matrix is with ones and zeros. So if we are using a one, we mean that two nodes are connected. And if we use a zero, we think we say that two nodes are not connected. So for instance, two one and one two are connected. So we put a one in that those positions. 
and also but uh, however one and ten are not connected so we represent them with zero in the positions one ten and ten one also you can note that in the diagonal we this we don't assume that uh, each node is connected with itself so what we have represented it with zeros through the main diagonal so this matrix that we have represented here is called the adjacency matrix of a non-directed graph. And this matrix is uh, how it's constructed. As we have said, we are going to introduce the formal definition. So if we have a graph with uh, n nodes, denoted from B1 to Bn, so the adjacency matrix of a graph like this, a non-directed graph, is a square matrix of dimensions n times n, such that it has a 1 if the node in the position ij, uh, which is denoted by aij, if node bi is connected with node bj by an edge. And of course, since the graph is non-directed, node bj is connected with by. And in the other case, aij is zero if both nodes are not connected. Of course, if they are not connected, in one sense they are neither connected in the other. In the graphs that we are going to consider in this course, we will not consider the existence of loops, uh, as we have said, which will represent that we are connected a node with itself. Also, as you can see in the previous examples, in non-directed graphs, the adjacency matrix is symmetric. This means that I have the same number in position ij and ji. Here, in this example, what you have seen is an alternative representation with the picture on the left, and what you can see is the matrix that we have on the right. More clearly here, you can see the connections that 1, 2, as we said before, is directly connected by an edge, by 1, 10 are not connected through a direct edge. And also, you can represent, also see that the matrix is symmetric, and if you consider the main diagonal from position 1, 1 to 34, 34, what you have seen is you make a symmetry with respect to this diagonal, you have still the same matrix. Of course, we can have also representation of a gen matrix for directed graphs. The definition is similar as before. If we have n nodes, we have to use a matrix n times n, and we will have a 1 in, if, in position ij, if the node vi is connected with node by a vj by an arc, and zero if not. In the graphs that we're going to consider in this course, we are neither considered that there exist loops as before, and the difference with respect and the properties of the matrix is that in this case, the adjacency matrix doesn't have to be symmetric as before. So as an example, what you can consider is the game of, uh, of we have a stone, paper, scissors, laser, spock, and in this case, what we have seen is that this graph is directed and the nodes were representing the symbols in the game. Uh, if one symbol beats the another, then we will represent with an arc going from the first to the second one. So what you can see here is that in this matrix, the matrix is not symmetric, right? Because for instance, the paper uh, defeats the stone, but uh, the stone doesn't defeat the paper. So we have a one in the position 2, 1, and we have a 0 in the position 1, 2, okay? So once we have introduced these topics of the adjacency matrix, we are going to speak about degrees. So when we have uh, the degree, we'll denote the number of connections that we have with a node with respect to the others, right? So in this case, what we have seen is that if we have graph B, a non-directed graph, the degree of a node will denote denoted by DD, D standing for degree, is the number of edges adjacent to B or the number of connections of B with the rest of the nodes. In other words, the number of edges that connect B with other nodes, right? So there's a property which is known as the handshaking lemma that represents, that says that the sum of the degrees of all the nodes is equal to two times the number of edges. So the thing is, as a consequence, what you have is that uh, the sum of all degrees has to be an even number, and you have an even number of nodes of odd degree. 
So you can have a similar or parallel definition for directed graphs, but in this case you have to separate between incoming and outgoing degree. So the incoming degree denoted by di or d minus is the number of arcs that derived to v, and the outgoing degree will denote it by do of outgoing or d plus is the numbers of arcs that depart from v. So there's a result similar to this, which is the handshaking lemma. And in this case, what you have to split between incoming and outgoing degree. And the result is that the sum of all outgoing degrees is equal to the sum of all incoming degrees, and both quantities are equal to the number of arcs that we have, because each arc is adding one for the ingoing and outgoing degrees. So here, what you can see is from this information, what you can see is what you have about degrees in the looking at the matrix. So for knowing the degrees in a non-directed graph on nodes 9, 1, and 34, is just uh, you have to add up the, all the numbers that you have in a number in row 9, 1, or 34, or in the respective columns 9, 1, and 34. And this is true because the matrix is symmetric. But if you are going to consider a, a directed graph, for looking about outgoing degrees, you have to add by rows, and if you have to think about ingoing degrees, you have to add by columns. In this case, it's the result is that each graph has uh, ingoing and outgoing degree in both cases equal to two, but this is not general the case that has to appear in the cases. And that's all by now. We are going to continue with more information about graphs in the next video.